things. But how many knows the best is yet to come? The best is yet to come. I'm just going to preach a little bit tonight on something the Lord dealt with me today at work about. Luke 8, chapter 41st verse. It says, And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was laying, she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stained. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody had touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Yet while he spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not. Believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, she, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleeping. They laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. He put them all out and took her by the hand and called and saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came in again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents was astonished, but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. And I got to reading this. Can you imagine Jesus walking down the street? And, and the reason why he, he told them to tell no one, Brother Chris, what was done is because of his fame was spreading out so much that he couldn't go no more without people Thronging him. And what that means is thronging him was a, so much of a crowd, brother, that Jesus couldn't walk down the street without people just... Can you imagine me walking in the football stadium with the football field full of all them people? One man out of all them. Right. Just put just mind's picture how many people was around Jesus every time he went out. And he was walked out and thrown me a big crowd of people. And the press is to squeeze, swarm, rush, or pressure him. Right. And here Jesus was walking down through this crowd, brother. And that you just imagine how many people was pushing him and trying to get to him. And all these people had their hands on Jesus. Can you see the picture? But you see that it was this one woman that touched him also. But she touched him with a different kind of touch. She'd been sick for 12 long years, spent all she had at the doctor, and rather grew worse. But Brother Chris, she had a need in her life, and she purchased in her heart, if I could get to that blind man healer, if I could get to that man, I believe everything's going to be all right. And can you imagine all them people touching Jesus, and this one woman kneeling down, Brother Chris, and touching Jesus, and he said, who touched me? Can you tell me why he recognized 
that one touch out of all those thousands of people that touched her, touched him. Can you tell me what kind of touch she touched him with? She touched him with a touch of faith. She didn't touch him with a touch of doubt. She didn't touch him with the excitement because here this famous man was walking down the street. She touched him, Brother Chris, because she had a situation and she knew that the healer was walking down the street. And when she touched him with a touch of faith, I mean, those virtue left his body. And immediately when she touched him with a touch of faith, he, she was made whole. Immediately. Let me know touching Jesus is all that matters. When you touch him with a touch of prayer, I feel God coming in here now. When you touch him with the prayer of faith, how many knows he'll bankrupt heaven to give you everything that you need? And here this woman had an issue of blood for 12 long years. And he said, who touched me? How many knows it was the touch of faith? Because if it was just Jesus wanting to heal her, Jesus just healing everybody that touched him, everybody that thrown him and pressured him would have been healed. But there was one woman that touched him with a touch of faith. And Jesus said, who touched me? And here she was trying to hide because she had an issue of blood. And to have that kind of disease in those days was a reproach. And she didn't want nobody to know who she was. But Jesus wanted to know who touched him. And when she was sitting there and she realized she had to admit it was her, Jesus told her, said, and he said unto her, daughter, be of good comfort. Comfort is relief in affliction, a state of ease. I got to study on that a little bit. She had this issue of blood for 12 long years, and she dealt with it daily, day and night, day and night. And she was constantly worried about it, constantly wondering if she was going to die, constantly worried about if she's going to have enough money to live. She was always in an uproar. But how many knows if your nerves are tore up and you're so depressed and you've got everything coming at you, all you got to do is touch Jesus, and he will speak to you, be covered. Comfort means being ease. Amy's hey, got some struggles in your life. Amy's hey, got pressures coming at you from the left and the, and the right. You want comfort? I'm preaching to myself tonight too. You want some comfort in your time of need? All you got to do is touch Jesus with a touch of faith. Don't get down there and pray, God, I would like you to do this. It's like a story I tell brother all the time. My daddy told a story this man needed $100 so bad. And all he had was a $10 bill. And he put that $10 bill on the table, brother, and he put his hand on it and said, In the name of Jesus, let that be a $100 bill. And when he moved his hand up and it was still $10, he said, That's what I thought. That's what I figured. How many knows God knows when you pray what state of mind you're in? Right. He knows when you pray and when you come boldly before the throne of grace. How many knows? He knows if you're doing it out of faith. And if you pray it out of faith, how many knows God will supply your needs? He said, asking you what? Shall we do? Seeking you what? Knocking you what? All we got to do is touch Jesus with a touch of faith. And if you don't believe it's important to pray and believe, the woman, the, 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 the guy, this daughter was 12 year old. They done told him, said, never mind, don't come to her house now because she's dead. And he, he took James and all them in there. And when he said, she's not dead, she's asleep. And they laughed at the scorn. What did Jesus do? He kicked every one of them out of the house. Right. Why did he kick them out of the house? Because dead, faith can't work where doubt exists. Say amen. amen. Somebody repeat that with me. Faith cannot work when doubt exists. Why did Jesus keep your people out of the house? Because they had doubt. Right. You, you think it's important to pray with faith and believing? Look at this story. 
just because they thought he was crazy or, 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 or they laughed him to scorn, Jesus kicked him out of the house. He said, you get out of here because I'm going to make this girl get up over her deathbed because I am the resurrector and I am the truth and I am the life. What changed that woman's issue of love? It wasn't just somebody in the crowd touching Jesus. Can you just imagine? He, she didn't even touch his skin. She touched the hem of his garment. It was not the touch of the human flesh. It was the touch of her faithful and faithfulness and her faith. It was not the fleshly touch. It was a supernatural touch. Right. It was that deep calling to the deep. It was something different about the touch. When you get down and pray tonight and you ask God for something, He knows whether you believe it's going to come to pass or not. You have faith. There's a, there's a scripture in the Bible. Jesus told him, said, if you could just only believe. He said, Lord, I believe. But help my unbelief. I mean, I got faith. How many's got faith in here now? Yeah. But you still see that the doubt sometimes creeps in. And, and let me tell you, if you pray a prayer and doubt exists, faith cannot operate where doubt exists. When we pray, we got to know, we got to know, we got to know that it's coming to pass. When God spoke to me to come here in Gunnersville, Alabama, and the devil tells me, look, the crowd's not here, nobody, let me tell you something, devil, you a liar, you're defeated, faith can't work where doubt exists, and doubt has no room in here because this is a house that God's set up, and God's going to bring the, the lost, the blind, the deaf, whatever God has needs, God's going to bring them in here. Heaven's going to believe with me, God's going to resurrect them. Right. He's going to raise them up. That's why I wanted to preach tonight. I, I wanted to preach today. What would what, what people person here? That's myself. Because just remember, when you pray, faith has no word of work where doubt exists. Right. It can't work. If it could have worked where doubt had existed, why did Jesus Christ run those people out of that house when it come time to raise that little girl from the dead? Because faith can't work, brother, where doubt exists. It don't take much doubt either. Just like the Bible says, if you just have the faith of the grain of a mustard seed, you can speak to that mountain just like that. Doubt, if you have a doubt the size of a grain of mustard seed, it's more powerful than your faith. Right. Touching Jesus is all that matters, brother. I've seen God raise the dead. I've seen Him create ways where they seem to be no way. If I could just sit here and tell you all now. I've, I've seen limbs grow. I've, I've seen all these great mighty things. I know God's real. He said that he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes, we are healed. But when we pray, just remember, and I'm fixing the clothes. For faith to work, doubt can't exist. That's a message tonight. He loves the Lord. Amen. Amen. loves the presence of God.
His presence. If you can just pray and feel the presence of God. If you can get your faith high, Brother Chris. Oh, I'm not sick of my life. Let me know what's coming to pass. If we can just only believe, the Bible says, all things. To that brother, it says, if we can only believe, if's the big word, eh? But Lord, I believe, hallelujah, but help my unbelief.
Don't look at us now. Look at us where we're going. We want all for the Lord. Anybody else got any prayer requests? Can you remember Brother Chris is going along? Brother Calvin, friends. Chris, uh, Keith's friend. Tracy, anybody else got any prayer requests? Uh, my pastor today, he went to look at another building for a church.